Welcome back to A Potent Dose of Three. My name is Kathy. I'm Linda. And I'm Jazz. And we're here to bring you your weekly dose. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I was watching this TikTok the other day, dude. And you know how we're You stay home. on TikTok, girl. I know. I know. Okay. What did you find? Because she literally stay on TikTok. I just, I feel like I learned so much. It's you know? addicting. It's addicting. You find like new things. You find new hobbies. Recipes. Recipes. I look for recipes. <laughs> And you just see funny stuff when your day's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. That's true. No, but I was um wa- I was watching TikTok and I was like watching a video from like a I think she was a former RN and she was talking about like how hard obviously we all know the healthcare field is hard, but she was talking about how like obviously a lot of people don't say anything. Like doctors or nurses or healthcare workers that are struggling, they don't say anything because retaliation because they're going to lose their job. So she was talking about a basically a website made for healthcare workers where they can go and it's called um, Don't Clock Out and they can go online and like find peer support. There's blogs for nurses. There's like, um, I think they do like peer therapy with each other and things like that where, you know, it's like a non-judgmental um, way to, just talk about how you're feeling because they they're dealing with the same thing mm-hmm. and you won't have to it's anonymous too so like a lot of the things are anonymous so. okay that was gonna be my question i was like do you have to put in your personal information and everything so it's like a real sa- safe place for yeah. healthcare. yeah it's a safe place you don't have to worry about like you know people um judging judging using you, it against you. Uh, it getting back to like you know like your employer um, so they have like debriefing. So like um, you can, you know, talk about emotional wellness and um, it, for different specialties, like of different, you know, like um, healthcare workers, there's physician support lines where um, there are psychiatrists that help the physicians and medical students and medical oh, colleagues nice. navigate, you know, like personal and professional things that they're going through. And it's all confidential and anonymous. Nice. That's great. I also, I, I love that they have something like this. Because as we know, like just being working in healthcare, even like studying to mm-hmm. get into like a field in healthcare, like it's exhausting. It's very straining on mental health. So good thing they have something like this out for, for people. Well, yeah, I found it on TikTok. I've never heard of anything like that. And I mean, I don't know if there's anything really like that and it's really cool because i i mean there's like high suicide rates there's high um what's it called burnout Mm -hmm, um, right things like that and having something like this to um, just imagine like the stuff you see in healthcare like people are dying people are like 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 we talked about like you have to be not only emotionally well for you, but sometimes for your patients. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Since you brought up, brought that up, can we actually talk about this? Because it's important. And I feel like people need to know. It's not always glitz and glam in healthcare. It's not glitz and glam in nursing school. So I feel like we need to take this episode to talk about like how we're surviving in in nursing school, how you're surviving applying to be a, become a doctor. So can we get into it? Yes. yes. Okay, let's go. So for me and my mental health, because everything is not like Linda said, is no roses and rainbows. Um, how I manage my mental health is by working out or getting like a stuff that I like. Like let's say I have a really bad day with school or with Tiago or just at clinicals and my way to like kind of decompress, especially before I pick up Tiago or especially before I spend time with him because I don't want to you know, like, get it off on him because, you know, he's a kid. I want him to always seem, like, fun in a way. Mm -hmm. So I go and get, like, a special drink that I like or a special cafe that I like or just a special little things that I like in order for me to, like, you know. A drink or a drink? No, no, no. A coffee (laughs) drink, not an alcohol drink. Not no extra shot of, like, a night. Okay, okay. Because I was with Jasmine, so I'm like... (laughs) I know you like your shots too. So. <laughs> That's after Diago is asleep. Exactly. Good. Diago is her son. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Or also, which also like helps me a lot, is to take a date, like aside for me, mm-hmm. like aside a day, for, a, a day you date. Yes. So like, oh, I want to go get my nails done. 
oh, I'm going to go get a massage. Oh, I'm going to get a haircut. Oh, I'm going to go buy myself some clothes. And that's helped me also to not forget about who I am. As I'm, like, yes, I'm a mom, but I'm also like Catherine. Good. Exactly. So, and that's good to remember. <laughs> yeah. So that's, has, that's how I deal with mental health, which is not the best. I know I have to go to therapy because I have a lot of sh- I was just about to ask, have you ever been to therapy? Nope. 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 But I think all of that has to do with the way that I was raised because in my family, they have people like a lot of like mental health issues with like my dad and my brother. And it's just, I feel such like an asshole. <laughs> But that's because I guess that's how I was raised, like, um, kind of like if you're going through some shit, well, get over it. Like, just flip the page. Like, you'll deal with that later or you just don't deal with it or you just keep it in the back of your mind and you never go back to it, you know? So whenever, like, especially with my brother, which I love, when he goes through, like, some hard shit, I'm like, oh, my God, you're so weak. Get over it. Like, why can't he be like me? Why, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like, and I check myself. I'm like, dude, you cannot be this way because... You know, he's dealing with other stuff and you can just, you know. Exactly. Did that mindset uh, shift when you started nursing school? Because like when did that you realize it's like, oh, no, he's actually dealing with something maybe called depression or whatever his um, what he's dealing with. Did that change that 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 uh, swift swift the shift and you like connected and dots like, oh, I need to not be so harsh on him because he's actually dealing with some really. So, like, when did that realization, like, come to When you? I started working as a CNA. Oh, a CNA. That's when I start like, connecting my dots. Because he would be, like, you know, he has, like, depression, anxiety. So, he has his good days and his really bad days. Mm-hmm. And I'd be, like, oh, my God. Is he just he just going over it? Like, get over it. Yeah, like, like he's weak. Like, yes, he's not. Yes. yes. Until I, with my own eyes, saw how it was really affecting him. And he would come and tell me, no, like, I feel this way, that way, blah, 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 blah. Then I'd be, like, oh, my God. I'm such an asshole. Like, yeah. What part of working as a CNA helped you realize it, though? Just wondering. I guess just dealing with some of my patients that, of course, my brother doesn't have Alzheimer's or anything, but some of my patients had, like, mental diseases, like mm-hmm. Alzheimer's and... Dementia. You, yes, dementia. So you mm-hmm. get to see that, and then I'm like, wow, like, this is real. Because, like, in Colombia, back in the day, and even now, they see, like, oh, you go to, like, a psychiatrist or you go to a psychologist. Oh, you're crazy. That's for crazy. It, yeah. It's looked down upon. Yes, yeah. it's very looked down upon. And then even then, I even start, like, and even my dad, because my dad went through, like, really bad depression. Mm-hmm. But he didn't He didn't want to talk about it. Like, that's something that's my family that is not talked about. That, that hurts my heart because so, I know a lot of, like, communities. Especially because he's a man. Oh, yes, yeah, it's even worse. It, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So they're like, oh, and then he, he went through depression twice in his, in his life. Once we move out here because it was hard for him to, like, find a job. And he was the breadwinner mm-hmm. in Colombia. And then in Colombia, he also. So they didn't, they don't talk about it. And I didn't know he was going through it until my mom talked about it. Because I would tell my mom, man, my brother is so weak. Like, he just needs to get over it. Like, <laughs> I went through the same <laughs> as him. Oh and I'm not going through it. Yeah. Like, you know? And then my mom is like, Catherine, you don't understand. Like, your dad was there. Like, maybe he got it from your dad. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're trying to figure it out. Exactly. So now I'm the one who advocates for my brother. I don't advocate for myself because. That's what I was going to. That's my next thing. I was saying, like, for yourself now, like, how do you deal with deal, deal with it when you're going through depression? Because I'm like, I, you, I know you go through the depression, but do it, you acknowledge it. Do you be like, oh, shit, I'm not just in a down mood right now like I may be actually dealing with depression or like anxiety or yeah so like the first time that I acknowledged that I was going through depression was when I had my miscarriage because Mm -hmm. when I had my miscarriage I also failed my class Mm -hmm. like it was like that was a lot yeah yeah. and it was like a class that I work really hard which was like organic chemistry oh yeah (laughs) like I didn't even make it to organic chemistry sorry I I lie okay I did a little bit I have trauma girl (laughs) you know you know know, I worked the whole semester i worked my ass off and then i was going through it but you know like they based on exams so if you must think one if you have one bad day you're you're done yeah Yeah. so um i got the call like oh yeah like you're probably gonna have a miscarriage and then that was before like minutes before my final yeah oh wow so i was like and I even tried to talk to myself, like, get over it. Get over it. Like, you're going to deal with this after the exam, but focus on the exam right now. I couldn't. Like, in the middle of the exam, I just started, like, bowling out. I had to step out. Oh, and then I was be. just, yeah, I was just trying to get over it. But it's because of this mentality that it, you're just so, she, like, I get over it yeah. instead of me, like, 
you know what, expressing of what I'm going through mm -hmm. and maybe talking it out, it would have been better than me just trying to get over exactly. it. Exactly. I'm Having trying that. to get this final done. Yep. And then... I would probably pass the class. Like yeah. instead of having that uh, that mentality, like oh, I have to be strong. I have to be strong. Let me get out over it. Like mm -hmm. you said, it's like if you would have taken time for yourself and 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 expressed yourself, you could have emailed the teachers like, hey, I'm going through some personal stuff. Can I reschedule my exam? Because mm -hmm. there are some teachers who actually really care about their students and would have understood and like, hey, take the time you need and you can come take this exam when you're ready to take it. To be honest, I feel like um, the whole be strong, get over it, keep going, keep pushing, don't give up. That like mentality is very um, common to find in healthcare. It's like you have to be strong and you have to get over it. But it's like we have to remind ourselves that we're humans and it's okay to like – even for me, like I have felt that I got to wipe the tears and ignore it and keep going. Like there's been moments where I've been – bawling my eyes out crying um studying for finals when i knew i was not okay and not taking that time out for myself to just pause go cry and get over it and then move on and i've learned a lot that sometimes it's okay to take time for myself you have to that's something that i was always really bad at is hey you're a human first a student second mm -hmm. um and um, it took me a really long time to figure out like Jasmine, you need a moment because, I, you know, I'm I'm hardcore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As I say, I'm hardcore. Um, and I don't like to take breaks for myself, but I notice that I always do better when I do give myself that time. And that's something I've really learned along this journey. And it's improved my mental health because had I not learned that, who knows where I'd be right now. If I'd still be feeling the same way because I've had bouts of depression and I've always worked through it, but it wasn't always the healthiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like even in clinicals, I was so surprised with dissertation because my CAI was like, okay, if you guys are seeing a birth, is it okay to have emotions? And in my brain, I was like, no. And then she's like, yeah, it's okay to cry. And I was like, <laughs> the cry. Fuck? I was like, cried. Cry. Who cried? Like, <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> but that's the th because again, like in healthcare, we're so used to like, no, your feelings come last, patients come first, that's, and your feelings comes last. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I, I remember I was in um in a room in a resuscitation room, and um someone passed away, and I looked around, and no one was crying, and I was like, no one's crying. Don't cry, Jasmine. But I should have mm -hmm. been like, you know what, Jasmine. If you want to cry, you can cry. It's okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you could even, like, step out yeah. Yeah. for a little bit, yeah. get yourself together. Because mm, holding back your emotions with things that touches you or just things that you can relate with, it, it's hard to not, like, stop yourself from crying. Mm -hmm. Um, and it affects you in the wrong, in like in the sometimes, long, because sometimes when I'm talking to Linda, Linda's like, bro, that's not, like, it's not funny. Like, you should. Oh, <laughs> no, because she, <laughs> Kathy would tell me her, like, childhood stories, and they're, like, traumatic in a way. And then she's over there laughing. I was like, that's not funny. Like, are you okay? <laughs> but I understand, I understand Everyone, why she does it, because I do the same thing. That's yeah. a way for you to, de what is it, um, like, to cope, decompress. but uh, decompress mm -hmm. and yeah, like you, that that was your defense mechanism mm -hmm. in a way. I'm like, okay, I understand. I'm like, but are you okay? Like, yeah. you're laughing, but I'm here. If you want to let me know, because I know Aww. that's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was the first time I acknowledged I was going to depression because I literally, like, I sit on the couch. I don't, I don't even know how many days I was in that couch. Like, I was crying and crying. And then uh, my partner would come and he'll be like, are you okay? Like, you're going to get through this. Like, he was, oh, he's always been my rock. But I was just like, I don't like it was so weird because I would be like driving and then boom, I would start crying. Yep. Like, I that don't sounds know. about right. No yeah, way. that's the so, yeah. And then I would f hate it. I'm like, why in the f are you crying? You would get angry after, huh? I, yeah, I would yeah. get yes, angry at yourself? myself. Yeah, like, exactly. not at the situation, at myself. Because you like, thought you were being weak. Yeah, I'm like, why in the f are you crying? I was like, you got, you're gonna wipe those tears and go to work. You mm -hmm. got angry that you let yourself get to that point, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. and then I'll be like, I'll call my friends and I'll be like crying and crying. And I'm like, I can't, I can't be this way. Like, I just can't, you know, it's just like this shitty feeling. Like, it's I just, so shitty. Yeah. Right. So then I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start working out because, you know, that's how I just deal with it before. So I'm going to deal with it right now. So I started working out. I started boxing. Boxing has always been like my outlet for like yeah, anger and everything. Mm -hmm. So 
that's helped me. And um, when was the the other time when I was kind of like depressed? Yeah, I think yeah, I was depressed slash like everything piled up. It was when I was applying for nursing school. When I was like, Fuck, I would keep applying, applying, and keep getting denied, and I'm like, Fuck, am I enough? Am I like make for this? Like you know, like you start questioning so much. Yeah, you do. <laughs> right? It's kind of yeah. like, can I just go and work in a bank and then just live my life? Like, just that's it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the moments that I've been depressed, it's just been like I'm. I just been working out, even though eventually, and that and that's the thing. Like I have so many walls. Because some people that I've trusted before, they broke my trust. So because of that, I don't be trusting. I don't, I'm not, I don't trust people. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you're going to go and tell my business. I don't know, you know, like my circle. And you're trying to use it against you. Yeah, like my circle is literally, like when, uh, before I had like a big circle. And my boyfriend always told me like, dude, you need to like, you can't trust these people. Because everybody's not your friend. Exactly. And I was so stupid and I would like fucking trust the wrong people. And then now I don't, I only like have like just one person, two max. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And then that's the thing. And then that's the thing that I like scares out of me about therapy that I have to go and tell strangers that I don't know about my feelings, how to deal. I'm like, why is he going to tell me how to deal with my feelings? Has, can he deal with his own feelings? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I always feel like that's been like my biggest issue that I'm scared that that if I give you or tell you everything that I'm going through, you're going to either break my trust or you're not going to give me what I want, like what I want or what I need. Or it just, I I don't know, I just have so many walls that I'm like, "Mm," even though I have to, because I think like it would probably help me with like life and relationships. So that you saying you would consider therapy? I would consider, but it will, like it would take me, I don't know. It will. It will tell. It will, I will have to find like the right person. If that makes sense. No, yeah, I totally get it. And like to be honest, I remember there was a time where I was like, "Yeah, therapy's great. Yeah, therapy's great. Go to therapy. I highly recommend therapy." But I hadn't been in therapy. Yeah, you tell it. It's <laughs> well, easier no, to tell on. everyone. I had else. been in therapy before, but I hadn't been in therapy during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I was like not prioritizing myself and i was like oh i'm too busy i have school i have this assignment i have this and i was like i'll get to it and i never did and then there was a point where i was like damn jasmine you are breaking down a lot you are a little irrational right now you're not making any sense let's go to therapy um and then i went to therapy and it helped a lot but like you said your first therapist might not be it you might need to date a date around and find the right one and Currently, I'm probably going to find a new therapist as well and um, try to see if I can get something more out of it. Mm -hmm, Exactly. As you should. And maybe start telling yourself is like, who cares? Like, fuck it. Who cares if you tell the therapist your business and um, like in general, like who cares if you express yourself? I know it's hard because I'm like talking to myself while I'm saying this in my head. I was like, damn, I don't know if I would do the same. But at the end of the day, like who cares? Like it shows more of that person, but it's just like us having to build up that like mindset is like everyone is not going to be supportive and that's okay. But you have to be strong enough in yourself and your own, like basically strong enough in yourself and kind of like comfort yourself when needed or just like them and continue i don't know no no i know what you mean like you're doing it for yourself and Mm. if it's like you're not always gonna get what you want out of something but yeah that's life in general yeah Yeah. exactly that's life in general but there might be another piece that it fulfills in you you know Mm -hmm. you don't know if you don't try so yeah just like getting even like trying and getting over that wall of just like talking to someone about it that's just a big step in itself Mm -hmm. and to be honest it has helped me because like there are times where I think I have it all figured out. And then they say something. I'm like, I never thought about it like that. That's weird. How have I never thought about it like that? And this has been on my mind for months, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's a really cool part of yeah. therapy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I just, once I get over my walls, which I, I really have to like soon, before my kid, I like, I just think about my kid. So I'm like, okay, for him, I need to be like a better me. You yeah. Know? So yeah, I I need to get over soon so I could start going to therapy and just work the therapy. Get it, you're that. Get it. You're... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. And then like I feel like you and I we kind of like relate in the same sense of like 
having that wall up, not wanting to show our vulnerable side and open it up with people. Cause like, even with me, it's like, I, I feel like I, I never was against going to therapy, but I was like, oh, I don't need it. Like I'll figure it out on my yeah. own. I'll let time pass by or I'll get so busy and like preoccupied with everything that goes on in my life. That's so easy to do too. So, so easy. easy. And it mm-hmm. makes you kind of like forget like what you're actually really dealing with. But until then when those you got moments, nothing and yes. then you like, That's what when am I doing? Doing? Exactly. When you just explode and it's like all these emotions coming, comes out and it's like those emotions are there and very relevant because you never, you haven't dealt with it. So it's like, go to therapy, try it, try it out. Yeah. So anyways, I guess to, to tell about like with me, like I've been at therapy um, and for me, I, I feel like starting nursing school, I feel like I've always had like anxiety and depression because I've been, honestly, I've been through like shit in my life where it'll be normal for me to have um, anxiety and depression, but like, I feel like I've never dealt with it um, until like as an adult. Like I remember I first went to therapy um, undergrad, like shit happened in undergrad. I was like, oh my God. I need to go to therapy. Like I need to talk to someone because at this that point, like I feel like I didn't have no one. I try not to get emotional. Fuck you, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I know, but no, no, like no, 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 no. Yes, it's okay. very yeah. I got you. It's different because I have friends, and of course, like it's good to have like a support system. But honestly, like with I, what I was dealing with, like my friends never been through it, so there's so much that they can do. And yeah. like we're all young, like yeah, it's like we're all kids it's trying like a to kid figure trying it out. To raise a kid, exactly. Not, <laughs> not dude, exactly. I, I was just joking. Like sometimes you do got to go to a therapist. Sometimes mm-hmm. your friends are not equipped to handle everything. Right? I get it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I went to ther- therapy maybe maybe like a semester or a year um, in undergrad. Continue to live my life, and I feel like when I started nursing school, I just that and like my anxiety like heightened like I feel like I was constantly comparing myself to other students because I felt like there were so many smart people in my class I was like oh my god they talk so well like they understand this I was like how did y'all how do you guys even know this stuff aren't we here like to learn it exactly (laughs) so that was like just me constantly um comparing myself Mm -hmm. um to other students and it got so bad like I did not even want to participate in class because I feel like Ooh, yes year. dude you and me hella relate to that mm-hmm. like my anxiety would get so bad it's like damn I know the answer but once though they call on me and it's silent everyone everyone mind you this is on zoom <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like looking and just quiet waiting for me to talk and I just ramble I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, and then I get so upset because I was like that's not what I wanted to say Dude, I'm so. Are we twinsies? Yeah. I, the yeah. same thing happened to me. Like, I have generalized anxiety disorder and I have social anxiety disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, and I study, okay? So I know what I'm talking about. But, like, we had a presentation and they asked me to, you know, like contribute or speak in the in the class and i was like okay i'm gonna pick something super simple something that i'm not gonna mess up because i know i get really bad anxiety and i start like i start stuttering really yes. really bad like yep. it's really really bad like not a little stutter no it's like uh, uh and you uh. get to the point like you feel like you're gonna cry when yes. you're speaking and then like i, I get like, all oh, red like my body starts shaking like keep in mind this is over zoom it's not in person <laughs> okay <laughs> like i thought i thought it would be better i'm like it's on zoom it's all good we're good I messed up the whole thing. <laughs> Changed oh, it to a whole no, other presentation. No. I said the wrong numbers. I I sounded like I didn't know what I was saying, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I put interstitial as something different percent, you know, plasma, how it breaks down. Uh-huh. Mm. Completely different. They were looking at me like, this girl don't know what she's talking about. Yes. She's and I was like, oh, my God, it looks so dumb. Mm-hmm, yep. I feel you. And then that moment, like, makes you fear everything else that comes after. Because yeah. like, damn, I don't like, want to do this Like, now I just again. gave an image of myself that I don't know what I'm doing. I don't study. Now I, like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it was getting bad. Damn, I'm so mad I'm because I know you guys, both of you guys are so, like, smart individuals that it's like, like, you know. Exactly. You know when I tell people that, um, they're like, you have... You're, you have anxiety. You have social anxiety. <laughs> I would have never thought. I was like, yeah, because I'm comfortable with you. Yeah, yeah. I do really good in small groups, small but settings, like in yeah. people, like in larger settings, bigger groups, I, I, I like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. Yeah, even sometimes it, this is how I feel like I'm like derailing. But even sometimes when I'm talking one on one, this is what I know. My therapist said. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> like I have anxiety because even when I'm talking one on one and the focus is on me, like Ooh. I start like getting anxious and start stuttering. And I never so, like had job a, interviews. Yep. Like you know, but even with friends, like uh, you would think, even with you or like I've known you literally all my life. Uh-huh. Um, it was like I'm having a conversation and the focus on me in my head. I'm like, oh my god, are you making sense? Oh my god, you're stuttering. Why are you stuttering? Well, and I've never. I feel like I've never had a stuttering problem. I don't stutter a lot, a lot. But when I get anxious, I start stuttering. Stuttering in my head. I was like, you fucking dumbass. And then you start thinking <laughs> about the next line, so you're not sure what you're saying. So then you're like, what are we talking about? I don't know what I just said. Oh, that's you. I'm like, I know what I'm saying. You said something. You said about a bunch of dumb stuff. <laughs> okay. 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 Not you. I'm saying I know what I'm saying. I'm like, okay. damn, that I was like, sense. catch me outside. Meet me in the parking lot. <laughs> For real. Uh, so, yeah, with nursing school, I feel like it's just like my anxiety heightened. Depression came back. And actually recording that episode of um, like why I chose nursing. Guys, when I tell you, I repeated those lines. Like I told my story about like 10 times mm-hmm. because I was just so overwhelmed with like emotions, like literally crying. I was like, I, I need to go to therapy. Like I need to figure out my life. Like after that episode. Mm-hmm. And I feel because in here we talk about stuff that we don't really talk about. With no else. one. Yeah. Like we really do get uncomfortable yeah. to make some, anybody who's listening comfortable. Oh my gosh. Yes. Do you remember when I came and I was like crying and crying and I was like, this stuff is making me think about everything in life and how my life is not where I want it to be. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like we, because we don't talk about it and we keep it in the back of our head. And when we have an episode, then we talk about it again and we're like, oh shit, like there's trauma. Like mm, I need to go to therapy. Exactly. And that's another reason why like, I'm happy we're doing this podcast because for me, for someone who does don't like talking about my life, being like open and vulnerable to people, I feel like feel like this podcast is like helping me learn how to express myself, mm-hmm. like learning how to say F- it. Let me tell my story. If I'm judged about it, I'm judged about it. If, but my over overall goal is to kind of help and inspire like someone who's like dealing with the shame, same mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Linda, just do it. You get uncomfortable. You could be helping someone. Yeah, yeah. no, really. Um, yeah, so that's 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 I'm happy that we're doing this podcast as well. So are you going to therapy, Linda? Actually, Linda, don't answer my question. Let's wait into next week's episode. Okay, we can wait. Stay tuned for next week to hear if Linda actually went to therapy. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Thank you guys for listening. Um, don't forget to email us at apotentdoseof3 at gmail.com if you have any other topics you want to discuss. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at apotentdoseof3. And don't forget to follow, you already know what I'm going to say, your girl Linda at Linda the FNP. See you next week. Bye. Bye.